come up. It'll actually be live there now, which it is. So we'll just start. So hello, everybody who is going to come along to this wonderful third time in our members interview so that you as members can come and showcase yourselves, what you do and your business or your service. So tonight, without any more ado, we have Sarah Fisher. Hi, Hello. Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Yeah. Now, Sarah, as I'm sure if you, unless you've lived under a stone and seen all my posts, Sarah is an expert in raising children. Well, to get the best of a relationship between a child and yourself. Um, and it's the best way, isn't it? Because if you can be in working with togetherness, then it is a harmonious encounter. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself. So firstly, hello everyone. Uh, as Lindsay said, I'm Sarah. I am a single mum to an adopted boy who is 12 and he is, uh, He's gorgeous. He's absolutely gorgeous. And he's now nearly the same height as me, which is slightly scary at the age of 12. Um, <laughs> so I'm watching him kind of, I reckon by Christmas he'll have overtaken me, which is a bit scary. Um, he moved in five and a half years ago. So when he was seven and he was tiny, really, really tiny, really kind of much shorter and smaller than you'd expect for a seven year old. Um, and it was the most amazing experience becoming a parent but also one of the hardest things I think I've ever done in my entire life. Um, I would, I, you know, I'm so, so pleased I did it, but it was really tough to start with. Those first few months were really tough. Actually, the first year was really tough for both of us. Um, my son had moved to a different part of the country to live with a woman he'd only met for 10 days, um, to live in a totally different lifestyle. He'd come from a very busy foster home, you know, loving foster home, but very busy to just me, and two cats and him so it was very different <laughs> a very different lifestyle and we live kind of on the edge of the countryside and he come from a big city so it was really really different um and he really struggled understandably and so did I if I'm honest I, I felt a bit lost as a parent and the it's really interesting when you adopt it is different than being a birth parent of course it is um but I didn't really get any help and he really struggled with his emotions so he didn't understand and wasn't able to manage any of his own emotions at that point. And they came out very quickly in a very um, aggressive way, verbal aggression and physical aggression. And it was, it was tough, I think is an understatement. Um, it was really tough. It was really hard for him as well, actually. Um, he was really, really struggling. And we didn't really get any help. I was kind of told I needed to parent differently. Um, but I wasn't really told how to parent differently, which wasn't all that helpful. Um, and I was parenting the way I was parented. And like most of us were parented, you know, very kind of rewards and consequences based. And, and that thing, because that's how we were all brought up. It, you know, I didn't know any different. Um, after about nine months, uh, my social worker said, I found this course. And she literally waved this paper in front of me like this and went, I don't know, do you want to go? And I was like, whatever, I'll try whatever. I don't care. I just need some help, please. <laughs> um, and I went on this oh one day workshop. And at the time, you know, things were, it was, it, I was black and blue a lot of the time, you know, from the behaviours. It was, it was really wow. tough. And, you know, I have, wow. we'll meet him actually at the conference. He will be up in Edinburgh. He's coming up to Edinburgh with me. I have the most adoring, kind, caring, loving young boy I could imagine. But we all know what it's like when we're really angry. Sometimes we can't contain our anger and we say things we don't mean, that kind of stuff. And he was just expressing it in the only way he knew how. So I went on this one day and, you know, when you're, I said about you, but I've sat in loads of courses over my time and kind of gone, oh, yeah, here we go, another course. Oh, I'm not really learning that much today, you know. But I sat in this one day and I was literally like, oh, all day going, oh my God, oh, this makes so much sense. And I was also surrounded by people who were experiencing much worse behavior than I was. So I came out feeling really lucky that I was only being hit. And that was a real eye opener for me. Wow. A real, I was like, whoa, okay, something's wrong here. Um, and I started implementing the approach that I learned that day, which is called nonviolent resistance. 
I'm not a big fan of the name, I'll be honest. I tend to kind of use the term connective parenting, but I started using the approach and things started to change straight away. Um, and it was phenomenal. It's the complete opposite to rewards and consequences. So you don't reward good behavior. You don't use imposed consequences. And it felt really, um, in one respect, it felt really natural. But in another, it felt really alien because, you know, it's like if you do something wrong, you expect to get told off and have a consequence. Yeah. yeah. We do it very differently in this approach, but it's incredibly effective. Um, and I started seeing changes so, so quickly. Um, and we've had no violence here for four years now. Um, at, at all. I mean, oh, I say at all. You know, I've had the odd kind of, you know, grumpy smack as he's walked past, but nothing, do you know I mean, every day, no, normal and in inverted commas child behaviour, I've had nothing. Um, and, you know, it's taken time. I'm not saying we have the perfect household, you know. I, I've been known to shout occasionally and lose my rag, as we all do as parents. We're normal. Um, yeah, absolutely. We have normal behaviour now and it is completely changed. It's been life changing. And having done that, I realised that I wasn't the only parent really struggling and not getting the help they needed. So mm -hmm. I trained, um, actually, I started my training about four years ago, pretty much in about two weeks time, four years ago in two weeks time in September, uh, did the full professional training. And at the time, there were very, very few trained MVR practitioners in the country. So I was one of few in the country. And I started putting it out there and helping parents. And I've been doing that ever since. Um, so I work with parents all over the UK and internationally, actually now, um, helping parents who are struggling. In some cases, they're not getting any support at all. Um, in others, they are not getting support that's actually helping. The help's not really helping, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. And I am so passionate about helping parents and seeing the changes and seeing how we can completely turn their lives around and their children's lives around as well. Mm. Um, you know so whether they are adoptive parents whether they're birth parents whether they're foster parents it doesn't matter and the child's needs don't matter in terms of if they've got you know additional needs and that for me is what is so amazing about this approach that it works for anybody it's about relationships and before my son moved in I'd worked in school I was working in school and I'd worked there for about 10 years I think when I went nine years when I went off on adoption leave and I was the head of HR amongst other titles I had. And um, I went back and I actually started using the approach at school with the staff. And it was so effective. And it's become my way of life now. So I started using the same approach because it was originally created by Gandhi, Mandela, Martin Luther King, people like that in a socio-political field and adapted to work with families. Okay. So if they can use it, and I can use it as a parent. I can use it in any situation. And I did, obviously you adapt it slightly. Um, but I started using it at school when I went back after my adoption leave. And people were kind of looking at me going, she's doing things a bit differently. What's she doing? And uh, I was just like, let's see how it works. Can't go wrong, can it? And it had a phenomenal difference. And I can use it, you know, I use it with anybody and everybody in any situation. So if you're in the supermarket and things are getting, I don't know, you know, sometimes it's a bit tricky or you see someone gets a bit angry with you in the queue or something like that you can use mvr in that situation oh so obviously i teach it to parents in a parenting environment um, and i teach social workers and other professionals as well how to use it and how to work with parents but once you learn it you can use it in all walks of life and that's what i think is so powerful that it's become my way of um i won't say being that sounds too much but actually just my way of thinking and it's, doing things it's you well, of yeah. course, my next question is, we all want to know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. So the approach is called non-violent, it's called non-violent resistance or NVR. So usually you'll see NVR written down. And I'll be honest, I'm not a great fan of the term NVR because it sounds like I'm trying not to be violent. And if I'm really honest, at times I was, you know, when my son was literally beating me up, they, your natural reaction is to, you know, fight back to a certain of extent. Course, of course. Um, but it is about, in its purest form, it's about resisting the violence in any situation. So whether you are um, Gandhi in India being attacked by, you know, the British Army and actually just saying, doesn't matter what you do to me, I'm not going to fight back. 
or whether you're a parent whose child is being could just be defiant and just saying no to everything or it could be being really violent you're standing there saying you know it doesn't matter what you throw at me I'm going to stay here really calmly and I'm going to just stand my ground Mm. and it's it's so interesting because that's a total mindset change particularly for a lot of parents a lot of dads I talk Mm. to are like no I'm going to have the final word and I'm like really do you need to have the final word and in mums as well you know I like to have the final word let's be honest but Mm. actually do we need to or is it just making us feel better in the moment agree and and I think that's the biggest shift for me yeah and also saying actually I don't need to shout back to deal with this situation I can stay really really calm and really it's okay I'm here I've got you I understand you've got these really big feelings and as a five-year-old or a 15-year-old that's scary I'm here to hold you and I've got this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would imagine the first time that you or someone uses that method method with a child or teenager or or whoever uh, an adult yeah. and they're not used to it I would imagine they would sort of be standing back and thinking what's going on here you know that would give that break wouldn't it to absolutely just, just to under, just to see what's what and then just that calming moment yeah it is giving you that breathing space it's giving the adult that breathing space to say okay how am I going to handle this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and often what we know is when we change our reactions to the other person over time they have to change theirs mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. their, their current responses aren't working. And I've been working with a couple over the last month, actually. Yeah, just under a month now. And they're an older couple and looking after their grandson. And he's quite violent and, and ugh, aggressive, I think I would use, actually, rather than violent. And they were like, look, we're really old fashioned. We know. And, you know, grandma, mum was saying, I shout a lot. She calls herself mum. And she said, I know I shout. And I said, we need to stop the shouting. And she's managed to slowly in the last month change that. And they said to me today, we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, that's fantastic. And we've made some really quite small tweaks. You know, nothing major, but they're learning to A, look after themselves. And that's one of the biggest things when I'm talking to parents, because when we're, you know what it's like, when you're really angry or you're stressed or you're tired, you're frustrated, your lid flips a lot quicker than when you're really calm. Mm -hmm. So your patience is going to run out a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. When you are topping up your tank, looking after yourself, you know, managing your own emotions, all of those things, you're able to stay calmer a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know this for myself. When I'm tired, my son's like, oh, you're a bit snappy today, mum. You're a bit tired. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, thanks. But it's wonderful. He's noticed. And it, but he's absolutely right as well. I am more snappy because I'm tired. I've got less patience. So it's at bedtime. It's like, just get up to bed and go to sleep as opposed to, you know, let's have a chat, you know, and, ch- and chilling out because I'm like, I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. Go away. You know, <laughs> and you do. So one of the first things I always talk to parents about is actually looking after themselves because they can't look after their kids if they're not looking after themselves no no and you know because your son has noticed that in any other children that you've worked with and parents have worked and grandparents have worked with you those children are going to be growing up with those senses of being able to feel what other people are feeling yeah yeah you know, absolutely that. yeah hopefully we are helping a generation grow up yes. with a real level of emotional intelli- intelligence and empathy yeah so you know if you hadn't discovered if, if the social worker hadn't literally sort of put this in front of your face and you hadn't gone and done the course where do you think you'd be now I honestly don't know I mean there were times when I was I couldn't I couldn't see it carrying on I didn't think it would be safe for it to carry on um and that sounds like at the same time there's no way I would have uh, with, with adoption your child moves in and technically they're not yours in inverted commas legally until you go to court and do a legal process you have right. what's called shared parental responsibility with the local authority so actually it might not have been my decision to end it if they felt it wasn't safe they would have ended it and they would have taken him and put him back in foster care now I would have fought tooth and nail against that mm. but at the same time particularly possibly being single, there is a little bit of me goes, if he'd been behaving like that now, 
He's the same height as me and he's a rugby prop. He's not a small lad. You know, yeah. it could have got really dangerous. Um, so I am, I will for, be forever grateful to my social worker for waving that bit of paper around. And learning something new there. Yeah. So just and, giving, no, go. And I think also it's enabled me to help and change other families' lives. Absolutely. And that's been the big thing. You know, when I when I stopped working at school, um, I was working in a large secondary school, I was a member of the leadership team. So I saw what was happening in so many different families and how so many kids at the school were struggling. Um, and then I actually I got persuaded to go and work at my son's primary for a little bit. And uh, and I went and worked there and again to see how they were working with kids to help, to then be able to say to parents, actually, I can provide you the help that you're not getting anywhere else. Um, and, you know, I see it day in, day out. I must I get phone calls and emails and messages every single day from parents who are at their wits end mm. and just don't know what to do or are getting told to, you know, put their child on the naughty step more. Oh, please. Can we get rid of the naughty step? And it doesn't work. Yeah. Even for neurotypical children, it has a significant impact on their self-belief and self-confidence. Mm -hmm. But it certainly doesn't work for any child who's got trauma background or is neuro non typical. And, you know, it, 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 why are we using something that doesn't work? Absolutely, absolutely. And you, you've got um, a group, haven't you? In fact, you've got two groups. So one's free. Yeah, so I've got a free group um, where I share kind of tips and ideas every day. And it's lovely. It's so supportive. It's non judgmental because I won't be doing with being judged. We all get judged enough in life. We do not need to be judged for our parenting or lack of or whatever it is people think. Um, you know, and it's bad enough when your child has a meltdown in Sainsbury's and everybody's watching and you mm, feel like the worst mum on the planet. You know, by the way, my tip for that, when everyone starts watching as your child is having a meltdown, is turn around, smile and say hello. You watch everybody who's watching will just absolutely disappear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So oh, they're okay. staring at you and going, oh, you're not very good or whatever it is they do. Go, oh, hi, you're OK. And just look, smile and go, hi. And they go, oh, and run away. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it's every time. <laughs> oh, I, remember that. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, in, in the free group we share, and it's so, so supportive. So there's always parents putting in going, you know, this happened today, I'm not sure I handled it right, or my child's really worried about this, what do I do? And the support they get is phenomenal. You know, it doesn't matter what time of day or night they post either, because it's an international group as well. And there's always somebody up at two in the morning. Um, you know, <laughs> so there's always somebody yes. around to help. So they do all of that. So yeah, so I've got that group. Um, and then I've got my membership group, so my paid group, uh, where you've lovely been company one of our experts one month and talked to them all about EFT, which was fantastic. Okay. Um, and in that, I um, do a little teach every week on a topic that's to help parents. Um, and we have experts like yourself come along. There's a whole library of resources um, that they can go and access and, you know, kind of pointers. So, you know, here's a load of um I don't know, therapists that we recommend that are really good or here's some books that are really good to read that can help you kind of gain that understanding um, and again there's a Facebook group so I'm going in there later on tonight actually to do a live a bit like this and just answer any questions um, we have chats in there they get to come they come, come for conferences and all that kind of stuff and it's just it's a lovely supportive group and it's giving them the help they need that most of them aren't getting everywhere else from a parenting point of view, that support that you need. Also letting everyone know that they're not on their own. They're not someone whose child is misbehaving and thinking, oh, it's all my fault. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. It's not. I'm just saying here, Louise says that um, she's implemented your approach ah. for her, her four or five year old and and how he's feeling and often before he escalates into whatever way he goes and she just says that it's incredible what yeah. you've been, what you've taught her i mean that that's, that's a, a fabulous so tell us um about this conference that's coming up now this conference is in edinburgh yeah and be fabulous if anyone can come along, because there are 12 workshops altogether, isn't yep. there? So um, it's the Connected Parenting Conference, and I created it around the first one a year ago. And I, I don't know about you, but certainly as a parent, you go to a conference, it tends to be one topic for a day. And you go and learn about that one topic. Not always, but as a general whole, they have a theme for the day. And the problem is, 
A, I couldn't get to all of them and B, I didn't know if I needed to go sometimes. And so I wanted to bring lots of different experts under one roof on the same day. So it's, it runs in three different parts of the country. So yes, in Edinburgh, uh, 21st of September, we've got 12 fantastic workshops happening. Uh, you are running two of them, which is brilliant uh, to get us all laughing, which would be genius and spreading the word of EFT. And I'm a complete convert to EFT. <laughs> I'll be honest, this time last year, I was like, EFT, you want me to tap? Are you serious? Uh, but it's life changing. Yeah, um, yeah. it's so good um I actually ended up sitting here I had something going through my head and I couldn't make a decision on something the other day uh -huh. I sat tapped on it for a few minutes and I was like decision made and I was just like that's the power of it that is the power of it this is if anybody doesn't know what EFT is it's just tapping on parts of the body and it works magically yeah it that's really it. does yeah it's phenomenal um, so we've got those. I'm running a workshop on managing meltdowns. So what to do in the moment as your child is escalating. So whether you've got a two year old having tantrums or a 15 year old, you know, throwing things around the house, it doesn't matter. Um, we adapt it to meet the needs of every child. Um, and that's what I love about the MVR approach. It's, it's not a one size fits all because we're not one size fits all. Everybody's different. Yeah. It's a framework that we adapt to meet the needs of every child. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's totally adaptable to meet the needs of every child and every parent, because every parent is different as well. Oh, yeah, we all um, are. Yeah. yeah, we all are. So, yeah, so I love it. So we've got that. Um, we've got um, a fantastic lady coming to run some sleep workshops, and she is amazing. So helping children, if you can't get them to sleep um, or if they're waking up lots in the night, um, and I know lots of parents have worked with her and seen huge, huge changes. Oh, um, so one mum, she was sleeping on the floor in her bedroom in her kids bedroom because that's the only way she could get them to sleep um she'd been doing that for oh, at least a year and having worked with lauren she's now back in her own bed um so you know it's that kind of thing and you know and sometimes it's just toddlers not wanting to go to sleep lauren's got really good skills so that's amazing we're looking at parenting teenagers because they are their own breed aren't they teenagers they are <laughs> slightly different to everybody else uh, so we've got a session on parenting teenagers um looking at kind of self-compassion and forgiving yourself if you don't think you're the perfect parent, not that there is such thing. So, um, we've got those workshops looking at anxious like anxiety in children because that's a huge thing that I hear about an awful lot of anxious children wow. and how it's really affecting them. Just, you know, even just um, the thought of going to school makes them so anxious they can't get out up in the, you know, they can't leave the house in the mornings and those kind of things. So That's amazing. I, I didn't think that existed, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's a huge, huge issue. Wow. And it's something that I'm seeing growing more and more and more. Um, and Esther's coming up to talk about that. And she actually ran that workshop in when we did the conference in Leicester and it was oversubscribed. We had to make it bigger because so many parents are struggling with anxiety. Um, so we've got those, we've got understanding anger and we've got the lovely uh, Maria coming to do sensory development as well. So looking at children who are struggling with their sensory development, which, again, is really common, um, particularly in children who maybe have a trauma background. So like my son, he hadn't learned how to do certain things properly um, and hadn't really his senses hadn't fully developed as much as you'd expect them to. But lots and lots of children, they're so um, their touch, feel, you know, hearing, so all of those things haven't developed as much as you would might want them to. Really? Which is really common. Yeah. Oh, really I see that an awful lot as well. Um, so Maria's coming to run a workshop to help parents kind of understand that and what they can do to help their child. So that, again, is amazing. Oh. Um and she can talk about flower essences, which is something that's really new to me, actually. So I'm, I'm going to be sneaking into that workshop because I want to understand some more about that. So I will be sneaking into the back of the room. Hopefully yeah. I can sneak into the back of the room um, <laughs> and, um, and, and watching that one. So, yeah, so we've got 12 fantastic topics. There's a real range of topics and parents get to choose the four they want to attend. So there's four sessions throughout the day. And when parents book their tickets, they can book one workshop from each session. Um, so they can pick one of four workshops happening in each session that are relevant for them. So it might be they think, actually, no, my child's not anxious at all. I don't need that one. But I'm really struggling with, you know, my teenager and I want to learn about EFT and I need to understand that. And I want to do that. So, so it's not. Perfect. So, again, it's not that one size fits all. It's what do you need to help you as a parent now? Mm. Um, and, and I think that's the benefit of it. And the feedback from parents from the last two has been it's been brilliant to have so many different experts under one roof 
and being able to pick and choose what I needed to do. Um, and there's lots of time between the sessions to chat to the other parents, get to meet people, maybe build up your support network. Because so often we live in a really isolated world increasingly. We might oh, not have family and friends yeah. around to help us. All the time. Or yeah. all parents who understand our child's kind of issues and concerns um, and worries and difficulties and all those kind of things. So sure. there's lots of opportunity for that. Uh, lovely lunch is a nice bit of self-care as well for parents for the day. Uh, which I think is really important. A bit of a bit of looking after them. Sounds it sounds fab. And there's tea and coffee and things like yeah, that. Yeah, tea and coffee available yeah. all day on tap. Um, I know that uh, the Marriott do an amazing lunch as well, and there's snacks available throughout the day. They do lovely little cakes and all that kind of all that stuff that I know I shouldn't be eating, but I have to eat because it looks <laughs> like yummy. <laughs> part of self-care isn't it it is it is chocolate yeah that's that's my argument it's, it's, it's myself <laughs> so you've got an offer tonight for the now members for coming yeah. to the conference yeah absolutely so tickets are now 95 pounds for the day um but for now members they are only 80 so um we can put the link in i think you've got a link and we can put it in underneath uh to the conference yeah, and then oh, i can tap it in um and if you use the code now N O W hopefully quite easy to remember for the group um <laughs> you can check out you'll get your ticket for 80 pounds um and as i said you can choose the workshops you want to attend um when you book your tickets so it'll give yeah. you the options for each session you can think yeah that's the right one for me you know there you go um and obviously if people aren't sure i'm happy to be messaged and say these are my issues which are the right workshops for me because i've had a few parents ring me and go awesome. i'm not really sure yeah. And I've kind of worked through what the right workshops or what the best options are for them. Yeah. And um, if they find on the day that maybe they'd like to go to a, another workshop, they're not put their name down for. And if there's space there, can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. We obviously limit the numbers purely to make sure that the parents in each workshop get the support and advice and time to ask questions. Um, but as long as the workshop's not full, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so, and sometimes we will have people going, I want to do that one. Oh, I want to do one. And they'll just swap over. So, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It really, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Just go there. Yeah. So coming to the because this has been fascinating. And um, I have I myself have learned so much. So let's let's end this with. Um, self-care, your self-care, yourself. What yeah. do you do to stay sane? So when I'm being really good and doing my self-care properly, I journal every day. Um, so I have a gratitude. I have two journals. I have a gratitude journal and I write down what I'm grateful for in the morning and what I'm grateful for in the evening. It takes me two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening mm, so uh, to do that. And yes, yeah, so worthwhile. And then I have a kind of a normal journal where I just free write whatever's going on in my head. And I literally just write until I run out of stuff to write. Uh, and sometimes it's complete garbage and I don't worry about grammar or any of that stuff. I just literally free write whatever's coming out of my head. So I do that. Um, I, I now do EFT every so often if I'm feeling Yay! a bit kind of all over the place. <laughs> I will be like, oh. um, and I walk. So I will get outside, get yeah. some fresh air, go for a walk. And I love yoga. Um, so I'll do some yoga two or three times a week at least now um, to do that. So when I'm being really good, those are all the things I do, as well as kind of, you know, making sure I drink enough water and all that kind of that kind of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So just finishing off with this. So this is really a, a quite a, a, a silly question because I like I like my silly questions. With Louise, I asked, I asked her what what adventurous thing would you do. So this silly question is: What's the best and worst purchase you've ever made? Worst pick worst the purchase. Gone into a shop and bought something. Oh, purchase. Yes. Sorry, it's a Scottish accent. I was oh, hearing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the worst purchase. Oh, crikey. Um, I don't know. I'm quite good with what I buy, actually. But probably clothes. There's definitely been some dodgy clothes options that I've bought. <laughs> right. Definitely been some dodgy clothes options. But I'm not, I'm not that big a... Sp I'm, I'm quite careful with what I spend, actually. Um, I think the best purchase was actually we went on holiday to Florida to Disney a um, couple of years after my son moved in and that was the best purchase ever very expensive holiday but the best thing it was amazing the two of us uh, on holiday for a week in Disney it was his like 
big dream. Ever since he moved in, he said to me, I want to go to Disney. I want to go to Florida. I want to go to Florida. Uh, so he absolutely loved it. Um, mm. And it was amazing. And I did learn that time. My son can actually talk for nine hours straight because he talked the whole way out on the flight, nine hours, nonstop. And uh, yeah, the lady in front of me at the end of the flight, she went, oh, your son can talk, can't he? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually sorry, oh my God. <laughs> oh, bless her. So she was there listening as well. <laughs> he was being quite funny because he's got a really good sense of humour. But uh, yeah, so that I think that's without a doubt my best purchase ever was that holiday. Um, just seeing his face and, you know, the pleasure for him of achieving something he'd wanted to do. But he really wanted. Um, he really, really wanted to do. Um, and the bonding experience of the two of us, I think, just, just going away and doing something completely new. To somewhere as well, so magical. Yeah. Yeah. No, everything, everything about it would yeah. have been um, sensory. Yeah, absolutely was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Terrifying. But yeah, some of the rights. But yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've got, I've got on here, it's just Louise who's put any comments in here. I can't see, if there is any others, I can't see them. But it doesn't matter. You can watch the replay yeah. and you can put any questions in and Sarah or myself will answer them, whoever you, you gear them towards. No question is too silly, too small, too whatever. Yeah. Just put them in there. The link, I believe, I've actually put at the top for to be able to book your conference ticket. Okay, fab. Yeah, again, if there's any problems there, just ping Sarah and she will help you out straight away. Yeah, absolutely. And, oh, and if you come, anybody who's listened to, sitting here listening to this interview, and if you come to the conference on the 21st at the Marriott Hotel, yeah. come and say hello to us. Say, we watched oh, you. Goodness. We think you're great. <laughs> <laughs> so, promise we won't be embarrassed if you do yes. that. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh. it's a, such an amazing day. It really is. I can't, I know it sounds a bit silly. You know, it's my day. I've organised it. Of course, I'm going to say it's amazing. Um, but it, it really is. And the feedback from parents every single time is, wow, you know. Um, and one mum said to me the other day, it just, it grew my confidence. I felt so much more confident when I left at the end of the day with a whole new toolkit of things I can use. Um, Louise says she can't wait for the conference because I believe Louise went to, was it the Leicester one? Yes, so she came down to Leicester uh, and came to the Leicester conference. So she's experienced it firsthand, what it's like um, and the atmosphere. And it's very, very laid back. It's really friendly, chilled out. You know, it's not kind of one of those. I think sometimes the word conference can sound a bit stuffy and, you know, mm. um, and it's not at all. It's really laid back. It's chilled out. Um, it's just a full day of fun, learning, meeting people, meeting, having yeah. a bit of self time, you know. Like, and like minded yeah mm -hmm. absolutely marion asks maria sorry maria um maria asks is there anyone who teaches non-violent resistance in scotland or do you plan to teach it here maria is the, um our flower practitioner oh, okay yeah so that. um i trained the adoption uk scotland team so i know they teach it i run a lot of my courses online so a lot of them i run um online so I get parents from all over the country joining up and um, one of the the things with MVI is you can teach it in one day but it's so much to teach it's really hard to do it I do do it but if you've got significant issues it's not enough support usually for parents um, so my eight week program for example is online and it's in the evenings so that parents don't have to leave the house to get there either you know they've got childcare issues that kind of stuff Perfect. Um, you know, you can put the kids to bed and then come and join us sitting in the living room with a glass of wine in one hand and it's nice and relaxed. Um, <laughs> whatever you need. Um, so I do I teach a lot online, run a lot of online courses. Um, I know that AUK run them, but they're not open to everybody. Um, so it's something certainly to look at. Um, but the one day you can teach it, but it is mm. tough to get through it. It's probably better over two days. So yeah, it's certainly something I could look at coming up and doing yeah. packaging day workshop. Well, Maria can have a chat with you on yeah. the 21st about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, anybody else who wants to as well, because yeah. it sounds not, it sounds brilliant for someone, not just with children, but just for every day. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if it's to stand in the supermarket and just smile at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, yeah and I, I've got wives using it with their husbands. Oh, I like it. Get that, you know, and, and they're like, I'm MBRing him at the moment. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I think you put MBR as a verb there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm MVRing him. I'm like, okay, is it successful? Which went, yes. yes. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, anybody who's listening to um, I'm MVRing him actually knows what it means. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it could definitely have a different meaning. Uh, but it's all, all good. All good. <laughs> Uh, well, Sarah, this has been fabulous. Brilliant. Thank you. It's been good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on and introducing us to this wonderful, wonderful method that everybody should know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I am on a real mission to get it out there to as many people as I possibly can. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a necessity. It should be on the NHS. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see you on the 21st. We will do in our beautiful country tell us we, we didn't say where actually are you living i live down in sussex so right on the south coast opposite end of the country so i'm oh. not really far away from the south coast so, uh, mm. oh the magical power of the internet eh? yeah it's good <laughs> it's fantastic so ladies we're going to switch off from here and i'll catch you I'm sure I personally will catch you at some point long before the 21st because yeah. there's so much going on in now. But like I said, any questions you've got either to me or to Sarah about anything at all or even go over and join Sarah's free group. Yeah. I'm in there and I'm amazed. I, I truly am amazed at what some parents, carers are going through. Yeah. I I just hadn't heard of stuff like this before. I really hadn't. And it's yeah, it's opened my eyes. Yeah. So Rachel says that was a that was great, ladies, and the conference sounds amazing. It is. All right. Yeah, it is brilliant. So, so everybody now, I'm going to love you and leave you and catch you another time. Bye. Bye. Now.